Well traders, I'm not going to continue trading today after uh, perfect uh, five winners, five green trades out of uh, five trades. So I've got a perfect day. I want to discuss just quickly what I did today. Now, the first thing you can see here that uh, my PNL is actually quite low for five winners. I've got over $4,000 in profits, uh, CGC, TGT, PFE, and then GILD and CRWD. All green, all still, I'm still holding some size in most of them. The only one I don't hold now is uh, PFE, which uh, spiked up a bit. So I've got the perfect way to start my trading week. I do want to go quickly through this. What's interesting about what happened today is the fact that all of my trades worked out well, most of my trades worked out exactly as my I'm planning. I mean, I'm usually looking for a gap and go. All of my trades are ex exactly what happened today. Like if you take a look at uh, CGC here, started with a big gap down, initially moved up, shorted it somewhere around here, came down, pulled back, continues coming down. That's a beautiful gap and go trade exactly according to the book. Same with TGT, starts with a gap down, tries to move higher, fails, shorting it as you expect it to come down and it continues down. Uh, PFE was a little bit different because that actually was the biggest gap down at around 8% because it moved higher, which is fine, failed to move higher. You may remember this point over here because I posted it for a short under 35.40. What I liked about it was the fact that it was supported at 35.40 uh, and then it finally did come down where I took it double size, although it's one of my smallest winners. And that's because it didn't make much of a move. But it, it was a 25 cent stop loss, 25 cent target. It gave me what I was looking for. And then it took me out just my last 100 shares of four or so. It took me out when it spiked over the highs and then came down again. Well, that could happen. And the same goes for uh, GILD. I mean, everything I traded today looks quite the same. So... Uh, a gap down, move up, you short it on the way down. Actually, this one was shorted here, a bit different, sorry. So this one, I noticed that it was coming down, it was shorted right over here. I believe it was under 75.50. And again, at that point over here, yeah, that was the point. At that point over here, it looked like it's failing to move higher. Nice kind of small perfect form formation here. And as you can see, the overall pressure was... Uh, down and again small perfect formation and once it came down it continued to come down very nicely uh, the only one that was on the long side was uh, CRWD and you know guys I usually <laughs> prefer going short I've got only one long which is still going CRWD over two points right now and uh, that's the one I wanted to talk a little bit more maybe because you see that's the different side of a gap and go. So the idea here was to go long but at the beginning of my trading session I could have taken this one long because it initially uh, came down. I'm not sure I had the chance to do it here. It came down then moved over the highs. If you want to go for a gap and go long that's the technical formation you'll be looking for. But since I had at the same time like four different trades or maybe just two that did the same on the short side, I preferred my shorts because fear works better than greed. Although as you can see in G CRWD it actually worked better than all of them. But I missed this opportunity here because I was concentrating on my shorts. But that's exactly the same idea. A stock that is gapping up, trying to move down then move strongly over the highs and uh, then you could go long but that one I did not go long at my let's say gap and go entry point I was waiting for it to come up come down and then go long somewhere over here now I missed that move because I was busy with another stock but since it came down a bit I joined it again uh, that was over 93. Initially, I posted it over 93.20, which was somewhere over here. It did move over the highs, did nothing wrong. I mean, it kept up trending and it's still going. So that's exactly the same thing. So, you know, gap and goes are usually the bread and butter of the trading uh, of the traders. Um, I've had uh, four shorts, one long, 100% success rate today. It's too perfect for me to continue trading. And um, you can see from my results today that although I have five winners, I'm just over $4,000 and that's relatively low. 
the reason for this is I started green first few minutes with few trades, maybe two. And then if you start green that way, always lower your size, always lower your size. Keep green. I mean, if you've got two trades, green. Third one should be lower size. Third one should put you in risk. Like CRWD, I could have taken it normally with maybe 4,000 shares. Probably not. It's a big mover, maybe 2,000 shares. I took this one today. I believe it was 600 shares. Anyway, and so, and the same stands for GILD. So you see, I, I moved into green territory. I wanted to keep my green territory as much as I can. Uh, small size after two winners. I'm okay with that. I, I did it correctly. Now, yes, I could have made much more money today, but I did play it the right way. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you do, you do things the wrong way. At the end, you pay the price. So today I did do it the right way. I made less money than I could. But if another day comes like this and the next two trades are going to be miserable trades after two winners, I'm still going to finish in green. And you know, when you have two winners, you build up your confidence in a way that you feel like you're invincible. And I probably had this feeling today. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I can look back at the way I behaved. But you know, you, you may not think about it, but you do feel invincible after two green trades. And that's what drives you to take the, the third trade in a way that uh, you put down the walls and you take the third trade, even though it may not be at the same level as the first one or two trades. And that's a dangerous part about taking a third trade after two winners. The thing it should be played is with less volume. You risk less at your third trade. And certainly my fourth, I already got three winners. Should I feel invincible? Sure. Should the fourth be with more size? I mean, theoretically speaking, definitely yes. I mean, if you're a gambler, but if you're a trader, your fourth should be with lower size. Certainly your fifth should be with lower side. And then when comes the sixth, <laughs> just don't take it. <laughs> it goes down in quantity until the point where you just don't take it. And that's what happened to me today. So anyway, um, I, did, uh, I did enjoy my trading session today. Um, thank you very much for being here with me today. Uh, it looks like we're having a, um, a poll now for how many winners or actually uh, how is your trading session. I'm going to click uh, the green. And uh, so far, it looks to me like we have uh, almost 70% or exactly 68%, 70, close to 70% in green territory, which is a beautiful green day. And um, well, I want to thank you all for joining today. It was a pleasure. Thank you guys on YouTube. Thank you, uh, all of you for joining us. If you don't mind giving us a thumb up, I think we earned it today. See you all tomorrow, traders. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. The material was taken from The Market Whisperer, my Amazon best-selling book. This essential guide to stock trading is ideal for those with no background or experience in stock trading. Click here to read the 200-page part one of this book absolutely free. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.